Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. I mean, uh, really thankful to NG Vikings for giving me this stage. So what I'm going to talk about today is uh, the thing I love. I love CLI. I really love Angular CLI. I think uh, the, if I have to give one reason why, uh, reason, uh, why I love Angular is, of course, Angular CLI. If it was not Angular CLI, I would have been uh, doing something else. So uh, I'll be talking about some internal APIs. Uh, so that's the talk. That's the topic of my talk. Explore the power behind Angular CLI. So before I go ahead and uh, start uh, my talk, just a little bit introduction. Though uh, Sebastian told you everything about me. So I'm uh, Santosh Yadav from I'm from Pune, India, and I'm one of the GDs as uh, Sebastian informed you. Uh, in case you want to connect with uh, uh, connect with me on social media, these are my uh, Twitter handles, uh, GitHub uh, uh, GitHub uh, profile. You can also connect with me on uh, LinkedIn. If uh, you are on LinkedIn, I think uh, most of you would be. So uh, let's not waste our time and let's get into uh, the talk, right? So I'm going to talk about two uh, important APIs and two amazing APIs which we have been using a lot, uh, but we don't directly use it. I mean, we don't directly most of the time create it. So I'm going to talk about something known as schematics and uh, the another thing which is builders. So let's start with schematics. So uh, if you start your application, you start with ng-new, and then you end up using a lot of schematics. So if you think about uh, ng-generate, ng-add, uh, those are nothing but the schematics, right? They are really powerful. Even the most powerful schematic, if I have to tell you, is ng-update. It updates your app like in within a few minutes if you have updated your Angular app uh, from Angular 8 to 9. So uh, that's an amazing uh, uh, utility, or you can say the uh, amazing use case for schematics. So uh, what you can do with uh, uh, schematics? So just to give you an overview why uh, I started learning uh, schematics, right? So the, uh, in my previous organization, we had a framework. We have an UI library, UI component. And what we used to do is we used to uh, uh, publish our libraries on our internal artifactory. And then we had a repository where we used to manually update every uh, breaking changes, or we used to manually update the library. Funny thing to do, right? But that was back in 2018. I was not aware of uh, aware of it. So I was like, uh, I did it for quite a few months, and then uh, as every developer's things, right? So after doing some manual task every month, you get bored. I also got bored. So I was like, okay, what should we do? Why I'm doing it manually every day, every every month or every week, whenever I have to release. So I just uh, started reading about uh, what we can do, and then I came to know about schematics. So I was like, okay, there is something known as schematics, which we which we which you can actually automate your installation. So what I have to basically do is I have to just add an ng add schematic to my library, and whenever someone creates a new app, they have to just do ng add my library and everything installation creation of files, everything will be ready, and he can just start uh, the code, right? Rather than wasting his time on setting up things, which I, of course, every developer hates to do, right? So if I have to do it manually, everything, I would never do it. Basically, I will, I will think about how can how I can automate. Angular tells you, OK, we have already done it for you. Just go ahead and utilize this and make your make your users happy, who are the developers. So automate installation, this, is, was, this was the use case where I actually started learning schematics. Then you can also uh, automate the creation and modification of files. For example, you do a lot of ngg, ng generate. So you create modules, you create components. What you do is actually create or modify a file. Basically, if you think about a schematic like uh, and, uh, Angular Material Schematics, where you can create a navigation bar, what it does, it creates few files and it modifies your app module, and everything is ready. You get a nice uh, navigation bar created for you without writing a single line of code. Uh, it can also uh, it can also automate creating application and libraries. Just to give you an idea about this, uh, the best uh, use case I can think about is uh, NX, NX Dev Tools. So if you go to NX Dev Tools, you will find many builders, many libraries which are already written. For example, if I want to create a next JS application, right? So uh, I can go ahead and uh, use the schematics and builders which are already written and just create a new application or a library inside my NX workspace. Everything is schematics and builders. So what, how about writing a custom schematics, uh, custom schematics? How we can do that? So uh, it's really simple. I mean, there, is an, uh, there are three things which you need to understand. The first one is rule. So a rule is nothing but uh, something which takes a tree and returns another tree. What is tree? A tree is nothing but uh, your virtual workspace. So you can see, you can think about trees and virtual file system on which you will be running your uh, lot of operations. You will be creating your files. You will be modifying your files. 
and schematic context is basically every schematics runs inside a uh, inside a context so if i have to think about a context it's like uh, there is a project uh, if it can be your application it can be your library and your schematics particular schematics runs inside application or a library and it also gives you uh, some uh, uh, what you can say the apis which you can use for example logger logger is one of the example but there are many more uh, helper function which we get out of context so how to create uh, your first schematics so you can just do uh, this you can just do npm install hyphen g angular dev kit schematic cli once you have installed your schematic cli you can use schematics command to create your new schematics so it's it's uh, schematics blank and then you can give a name to your schematic so here i'm saying okay my my schematic name would be ng add for example uh, because ng add is the minimum requirement for all the libraries if you go go ahead and see any any uh, uh, ui libraries or uh, for example any uh, other libraries state management libraries they all they always have support for ng add so you don't have to do all the manual installation back in uh, if you remember material 4 or 5 we have to do we have to follow four to five steps do this do this and then uh, suddenly it was gone and we had ng add so amazing thing to do so this is the same thing which you can do for your users so how to write it so once you create your application uh, let me just show you uh, the folder structure so here uh, So this is the folder structure which you get out of uh, the schematic command which you uh, just saw. I have added two, so I'll generate and ng add, uh, just to give you an uh, idea. So index.ts. So this is the file which we are going to talk about. So here uh, is my ng add schematics. We have an options. Options are nothing but uh, what you can do is you can create a schema.json file. For example, uh, I have uh, I don't I have not created any uh, schema.json file, but if you want to restrict your user input, you can go ahead and create schema.json file, which will be available as options. So if I have to talk about options, for example, if you say ngg module, right? So there are multiple options you can pass. For example, hyphen fn routing, you can hyphen, uh, pass hyphen fn route to specify which route. And uh, you can also pass hyphen fn module to specify on which module you want to add uh, this particular component. So that's what you can do with options. Then tree, as we uh, spoke about, so tree is nothing but uh, which gives uh, it's uh, your virtual file system where uh, all the files modification creation everything will be done and then you have context so context is uh, uh, which is going to give you some amazing apis the first api which uh, generally we use during the creation of a library for example if i want to uh, do and uh, give an ng add support for my library and i want to also install a few extra libraries for example just a simple example which i want to give you is uh, let's say ngx bootstrap right so when you do ng add ngx bootstrap it also installs bootstrap css how it does that so it's nothing but the node package install task so it says okay go ahead and install this package as well then uh, uh, talking about tree as we said uh, it's a virtual file system so you can use a create method which is available and you can give a file name and then your content for that particular file and your file will be created remember you can also pass buffer so for example, if I want to read some data from another file and then create my file, that's absolutely possible. You can just pass it as a second parameter. You can also read a file uh, by using tree.read. For uh, the most important thing to remember, I have given here is our operator because uh, it may be, may be possible that your file does not exist. And in that case, we have to return blank. Uh, in case you want to overwrite a file, just use dot overwrite method and give your file name and whatever content which you want to overwrite. And that's it and then you have delete so if you think about this uh, all this function it re resembles to your crud operations right so uh, all the crud operations you can perform on your tree and at the end you have to return uh, you have to return the tree if you see line number 25 we are returning the tree so if i talk about this this ng add function it what your rule does is rule takes a tree and returns another tree a modified tree so the advantage of doing this is in case I have a lot of uh, like many number of lines of code, I can split them into smaller chunks, smaller functions, smaller rules, which returns a new tree every time. So this is what, poss what is possible using those functions. Then we have, uh, uh, you might have seen generate schematics, uh, which creates files. That is also possible. So what you have to do is whenever you are creating uh, something uh, where you have to create a templates, you can create a files folder, then uh, you can create underscore underscore name add the red dash rise and under that you can create multiple files for example if i uh, right now i just need a ts file 
for uh, just this demo but i can also have dot html dot uh, css dot scss all the files inside this particular folder and what you can do is you can use the functions or the helper functions which are provided by schem uh, this uh, schematic cli so here you can see i have what i have done is i have used generate function and i am taking options the, those options can be your uh, module uh, routing route all this uh, all these uh, options which you just spoke about right and then here uh, on this line number 8 we are what we are doing is we are applying uh, our template actually uh, what you are doing is we are creating our template which will be added inside my file so apply templates function here basically it does nothing it removes the dot template from your file name and creates or passes uh, all the options and string is another utility function which is available so uh, it passes everything to your index.ts uh, sorry this file.ts file and so you can go ahead and create a new file so here you can see this classify method this classify method is coming from the strings utility so if i uh, go to the strings utility you will find there are many methods which are available for example decamelize uh, there is something dasherize so the lot of uh, helper functions are already available so you don't have to actually in case uh, i want to make sure that my if i am creating a class it should be uh, in camel case so i don't have to write all those code by myself so that's possible using all this uh, strings utility that's why i'm passing it here and at the end i'm just merging the entire thing so i'm merging my template which is created into my virtual tree and then i'm returning a new tree so that's what i'm doing in generate so in case you want to go ahead and uh, create or uh, add a uh, generate utility that's also possible generate schematics so uh, the last thing which is uh, uh, which it requires is collection.json if you if you don't have this file your schematics will not work so what you have to do is whenever you are uh, you are adding a new schematics you have to make an entry into your collection.json so here you can see i have added two nti and generate uh, there will be a factory function for both so fa factory is nothing but the uh, path to your index.ts file and uh, then your uh, main method right so you, you can also do export uh, default that's also possible but i prefer giving a, it a name so i know which method is being called so uh, in case i am creating uh, for example let's say component i am creating service so i can add more entries into this the next file is schema.json so schema.json will be used in case i want to restrict the user inputs or i want to make some uh, inputs uh, mandatory for my user or even i want to give a command prompt or uh, sim simply i can call it as prompt for example if when once you create a new application right so you get a prompt uh, do you want to add a routing uh, uh, routing to your application which css you want to use so all those are nothing but prompt so you can just uh, add the prompt and that variable whatever input the user enters will be available into this properties which you can access into your options so uh, next is uh, your package.json so one thing which you have to do is in your package.json you have to add the path to your collection.json so make sure if you are into uh, if you are making uh, adding your files into src folder for example here so i have to give a path here for example src slash collection.json you can keep collection.json anywhere i can just move it outside but you have to just make sure that you are updating your factory path and as well as this uh, schematics path so that's that's it and uh, your uh, schematics is ready now to run this schematics you can just do npm run build because all these commands are already available inside the schematics and you are uh, good to go and then to generate or run any existing schematics you of course you want to test it so what you can do is you can just say schematics dot colon uh, your schematic name so for example i am doing for generate and then i am taking a parameter called name because that will be the file name of my file or my class and then i'm saying employee and debug false is to make sure that files is created by default it runs in debug mode so no files will be created until unless we deploy this package on npm and someone uses it so to avoid that i am using debug false and you can see uh, our first file is ready which is export class employee so that's it what uh, this is what we have at, actually written inside our schematics so this is it about schematics this are the commands how you can run it for example to, if i want to take it for ng add i can do schematics colon ng add uh, to make to see actual changes i can pass debug false and similarly i can just say for generate i can just say uh, same uh, hyphen hyphen name and then debug false so this is about schematics uh, next api i am going to talk about which i love because i have already created few angular builders and 
So uh, before we uh, move into Angular Builders, I will talk a little bit about history. Uh, and this is where this file comes into the picture. For if, if you if you can see this file uh, and don't get anything, so don't worry. This file is coming from Angular 4 application. So in Angular 4, we had all this command e 2 e link test. But to give you an idea about uh, these are the these are uh, these are your actually builders, uh, which these are actually uh, converted to builders once you move into Angular 6 and above. So all these commands were available, but there was a problem. There was a problem that there were two commands which were missing from your dot angular hyphen cli dot json, which is build and serve. So what we uh, did is uh, we uh, we faced a lot of issues. So if, if if I want to configure or if I want to let's say override some build pack, a webpack configuration which is under the hood of the CLI, I cannot do that. I cannot do that uh, using the default configuration which was provided to us. Building and publishing library was a challenge because we have to actually go ahead and configure ng packager manually and a lot of things required, right? And so everyone hates doing manual things, including me. And uh, then we, uh, if I want to, uh, if I want to use uh, the tools like Jest or uh, Cypress, I cannot because uh, uh, there is no option to override. Uh, if uh, you can do that, but you have to write a lot of code or on top of it. For example, you can write grunt or gulp task, which is again an overhead. So, uh, what was the old solution? So, old solution was NGJet. In case anyone has done it, you know the pain, right? Six hundred lines of codes, no one understands. The guy who actually wrote it, he only understands what he has done, but no one else, uh, once he leaves, this is uh, uh, everything is mess. So there was a time when, uh, when everyone started running their own custom config. Uh, everyone was like, okay, leave the endless CLI, let's move on to custom config because it gives you uh, gives you more options. I can go ahead and uh, actually uh, override my own webpack configuration, even though it is required or not, just to be cool, right? Sometimes we do things just to look, look cool. And uh, at that moment, Angular team said, okay, don't leave us, we can change. And Angular team decided to come with a solution which is known as Builders API. So in Angular 6, uh, once you upgraded to Angular 6, there was a file called angular.json. And suddenly, everything was removed. And we had stuff and build commands also available inside our angular.json. And we had something interesting. We had a builder option. So I was like, OK, what's this builder option? So builder option is nothing but an NPM package which is available. and this. A target actually goes goes ahead and triggers that builder, and you can also pass some options or the parameters to these builders by using options. So in uh, you can see for every everyone, right? For example, serve, build. We had a lot of build. Uh, we had builder, and then we had a lot of options which can be passed. For example, which asset, which styles. In case I want to uh, replace the files uh, during your production build, that's was that was also possible using all the builders. So this was for ng packager. For example, if I want to build my own library, I don't have to do any manual things uh, with Angular starting Angular 6. So in Angular 6, if you remember, we already got ngg libraries, right? Uh, so you can create your own library. So that's amazing, right? And uh, with that, they introduced a builder as well. So you can build your application easily. Similarly, for test and E2E also, they added the builder. But the main question remains the same. How in case I want to write my own command or in case I want to add a new tool which is available today, it's Cypress. Tomorrow it can be anything, right? So you know, you know the infrastructure or uh, uh, the tooling of Java's uh, tooling ecosystem of JavaScript. It changes very frequently. Now uh, there was a time we when we were struggling with Gulp and Grunt, and now uh, we are struggling with Webpack. So uh, in case I want to actually uh, uh, create a new command and incorporate my own. Uh, tool inside Angular CLI that's possible. How it is possible? By using custom builders. So let's see how to write a custom builder. To give you an idea, there is no CLI available right now to uh, create a new Angular uh, builder, uh, builder project. It is available for schematics for sure. And uh, so what we, what I generally do is I take a uh, uh, repository which is mentioned in Angular IO doc. So I'll share the link afterwards. And I just start working on it. So if you think about uh, builder, it actually nothing but a create builder function which takes some parameter and uh, it returns a builder output. So let's see what the inputs are and then how your uh, what is your output. So if I think about uh, for uh, so if you see this execute function, right? So you can see there is something known as builder options and then there is a builder context and builder output. So builder options are nothing but uh, here again uh, you can actually create a schema.json to collect your inputs. So in previous slides you saw there was options 
uh, in every uh, builder. For example, here we have protector config dev server target. All these are the uh, inputs which will be available here on line number nine as uh, your builder options. Builder context, again, it gives you access to some powerful APIs, for example, logging. And it also gives you access to two more powerful APIs, which we'll see next. And builder output is nothing but where you can actually return true or false, whether your, uh, uh, your uh, builder has executed successfully or not. So let's see next. So uh, the, the, this syntax gives you uh, access to these two powerful APIs, which is scheduled target and scheduled builder. So what you can do using this, uh, this uh, APIs are, for example, using scheduled target, you can run any existing uh, command which is available in your angular.json. For example, I want to incorporate with uh, Cypress or any other tool, but I want to build it first. So uh, what I can do is I can use the scheduled target where I can pass target equals to build and the project uh, which project on which project I want to run this particular thing and the configuration. It can be production, it can be UAT, it can be uh, dev, whatever uh, configuration you want to execute. And then there is another uh, uh, powerful API called scheduled builder. It, for example, if I want to create my own builder, but I want to uh, refer to an existing builder, it can be, let's say, NGX build plus right? created by Manfred. So uh, what I can do is I can just pass my builder here and I can pass all the other options which I want to include. So that's that's amazing use case which you can do using this two powerful APIs. You can also uh, you can also actually update uh, the status of your uh, uh, current uh, builder by using report status. You can just update it to error, running, stopped, or waiting. Uh, waiting is uh, in case you want to wait for some existing task to finish. So you can uh, just update it, report status, waiting. That's it. And then once you want to start it, you can either go ahead and do two things. You can also say report status just blank. Just leave it blank so it will remove the status. Or you can just say context.report running. So it starts running again. In uh, schematics, you need collection.json. In builders, you need builders.json. So here, in builders.json, what you define is you say uh, this builders is uh, this custom builder name is the name of your command. For example, I want to create a new command called analyze or deploy. So I can just give that here. And the implementation refers to my index.ts file schema in case I have defined my schema.json and this description, just uh, the normal description for what your builder does. And yeah, finally, in package.json, you have to add this builders, builders.json. Remember, in schematics, you have to add schematic, uh, collection.json. In builders, you have to add builders.json. And that's it. You just created your own builder. And then you can deploy it on uh, NPM. Or in case you want to test it locally, I'm sure most of you are aware of NPM link. Uh, you can use npm link also to test your builders locally how to use it so once it is created you have to just go ahead and write uh, 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 configuration into your uh, angular.json so what you will do is you will say your custom builder name which is your command name for example analyze right so i said analyze then builder is the name of my package colon my custom builder name so my package name it's let's say it's ngx builders so i can say colon uh, ng uh, package is ngx builders colon my custom builder name which is analyze and then options which I want to provide here, which will be available to my builder. And then finally, you can just run this command, ng run your app name, colon, your builder name, which you added in your angular.json. And that's it. It will execute your builders. There are a few, uh, but before you go ahead and write your own builders, right? Remember, there are many, uh, com uh, many um, community members who have already written a lot of builders. So I have just mentioned few. For example, Jeb has written custom Webpack browser, custom Webpack server. Uh, Karma, um, Manfred has written NGX Build Plus. Angular team wrote Angular Fire Deploy. Angular Builders uh, just is already available in case you want to use just Azure, NG Deploy, Shamila, and uh, uh, Wasim has worked on it. So these are some community uh, community driven comes to custom builders which are already available. NG Deploy was the most uh, I would say most uh, 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 famous uh, use case for uh, custom builders. Now, if you remember, it, uh, Angular 8.2.3 introduced this command, ng-deploy, where you can deploy your application from your CLI. Amazing, right? So when I uh, heard about this, uh, this use case, I was like, OK. Now, uh, the most important thing to understand here is once ng-deploy was available, Angular CLI takes care of your entire development uh, uh, life cycle. For example, ng-new, where you are actually, the development starts, ng-deploy, where your application is actually deployed. That's the entire life cycle of, of an application. So you don't have to leave Angular CLI now. So uh, a lot of Angular, uh, the community members actually wrote uh, uh, the uh, deploy builders. 
Uh, we have uh, for Angular Fire, we have uh, Azure Engine Deployer for Zite. We have one Angular CLI JS pages, which was written by one of my friend Johannes. And then we had Netlify Builder and then NGX Deploy NPM. Now we also have for AWS. And uh, in case you are working with NX, I mean, I have, I'm sure you might have heard about Deploy It. So that's also an builder. In case you want to create your own NGX Deploy Builder, uh, Johannes Hope created this awesome uh, starter project. So you can just go ahead and download it and start creating your own deploy project or your deploy builder. Uh, I have added some references for you in case you want to refer the code base. So uh, you can refer uh, Angular CLI, uh, where there, there are already implementations for Webpack. You can refer the uh, Narval repository, where for next they have written a lot of custom builders and schematics. Uh, you can refer uh, my own project for a uh, source map analyzer. And uh, uh, you can also, uh, again, I have added one uh, more reference to uh, in, uh, uh, Narval. Uh, where we, uh, there is some schematics written for Angular. And finally, there is one more for Angular schematics, which is referred, which refers to your actually Angular package. And uh, thanks to this amazing guys who actually wrote about uh, schematics and builders where, from where I actually learned it, Thomas and Natalia, who actually wrote uh, and uh, created some resources for schematics. And that's how I learned it. Johannes Hope and Minko, they started uh, they started the builders. They, uh, Johannes is one who actually wrote NGX GitHub pages. And Minko actually wrote a blog post from where I got uh, the idea about Angular builders. And that's that's how my talk came, uh, came up. So uh, thanks to this beautiful guys. And thank you. Thank you for, uh, for listening to me. And thank, thank you for having me. And in case you want to connect, uh, if you have questions, please feel free to ask.